Xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis is a rare benign inflammatory disease of the gallbladder that may be misdiagnosed as carcinoma of the gallbladder on imaging. Xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis is characterized by a focal or diffuse destructive inflammatory process, with accumulation of lipid-laden macrophages, fibrous tissue, and acute and chronic inflammatory cells. Xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis, previously known as fibroxanthogranulomatous cholecystitis, was initially described as a variant of chronic cholecystitis. However, it is now recognized as a distinct clinical entity that can lead to significant morbidity as the inflammatory process usually extends into the gallbladder wall and adjacent structures. The pathogenesis of xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis may be related to extravasation of bile into the gallbladder wall from rupture of rokitansky ashoff sinuses or by mucosal ulceration. This event incites an inflammatory reaction in the interstitial tissue, whereby fibroblasts and macrophages phagocytose the biliary lipids in bile, such as cholesterol and phospholipids, leading to the formation of xanthoma cells. Presenting symptoms in patients with xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis include acute onset of right upper quadrant abdominal pain 85%, nausea 26%, and vomiting 22%. On physical examination, a positive Murphy's sign is present in approximately 53% of patients, and can mimic acute cholecystitis. Other patients may have more chronic symptoms, including weight loss 9% and anorexia 18%. A right hypochondrial mass is palpable in approximately 10% of patients, mimicking carcinoma of the gallbladder. Approximately 20% of patients have jaundice at presentation due to obstructive complications of xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis. Features of xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis include hypoechoic nodules or bands in the gallbladder wall and a diffusely thickened gallbladder. Other findings on ultrasonography include a gallbladder mass, subhepatic fluid collection, obscure border between the gallbladder and liver, and rarely, gas in the biliary tree in patients with a biliary fistula. Concurrent gallstones are frequently present. Contrast-enhanced ultrasound may be more sensitive as compared with transabdominal ultrasound. However, findings on ultrasonography are not specific for xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis. Intramural hypoechoic nodules can be seen in other conditions, including intramural abscesses, cholesterolosis, and adenomyomatosis. Features of xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis on CT and MRI include diffuse gallbladder wall thickening, intramural nodules, and a smooth gallbladder wall. After contrast enhancement features of xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis include continuous enhancement of the mucosal line, pericholecystic infiltration, transient hepatic attenuation difference at the gallbladder bed of the liver, and luminal surface enhancement. Laboratory studies are usually normal, but approximately 20% of patients have obstructive jaundice with elevated liver enzymes in a primarily cholestatic pattern disproportionate elevation of the alkaline phosphatase, gamma-glutamyl transferase, and bilirubin. Approximately 30% of patients with xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis have complications at presentation. Local complications include gallbladder perforation and bile duct obstruction. Bile duct obstruction may be due to development of strictures of the bile duct xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis or cholecolithiasis, and rarely, is due to extrinsic compression of the bile duct Marizzi syndrome. Prolonged cystic duct obstruction and gallbladder distension under pressure during the acute inflammatory phase can lead to extension of the xanthogranulomatous inflammation beyond the gallbladder with formation of hepatic abscesses and fistulas into adjacent structures, such as the liver, duodenum, stomach, colon, and skin. Xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis may be confused for gallbladder cancer in its clinical presentation and radiographic appearance. Histopathological evaluation of the gallbladder usually facilitates differentiation of these disorders, although rarely the two can occur together. The clinical presentation of xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis can be similar to that of acute cholecystitis, however, the imaging findings are distinct. The diagnosis of xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis is often made incidentally on histological examination of the resected gallbladder in a patient with suspected acute cholecystitis. However, a diagnosis of xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis should also be considered in the following clinical scenarios. 
right upper quadrant mass and or pneumobilia suggestive of an enterobiliary fistula on abdominal imaging. In such cases, we perform a magnetic resonance imaging, magnetic resonance cholangiopancreatography to delineate the biliary tree prior to surgery. In patients undergoing cholecystectomy, a markedly thick-walled gallbladder with extensive, dense, fibrous adhesions to neighboring structures should raise the suspicion for xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis. Intraoperative findings cannot reliably differentiate between gallbladder cancer and xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis. On gross examination, the gallbladder is thickened and the serosa is covered with dense fibrous adhesions. The mucosal surface may be ulcerated and cross-sections through the wall reveal xanthogranulomatous foci, which appear as yellow nodules or plaques. These yellowish foci may extend into adjacent structures, such as the liver, duodenum, transverse colon, and omentum. Microscopically, the xanthogranulomatous foci are composed of abundant lipid-laden macrophages, fibroblasts, and inflammatory cells. The lipid-laden macrophages are of two morphological types, rounded foamy macrophages and spindle-shaped cells with more granular cytoplasm and elongated nuclei. Other findings include the presence of cholesterol clefts, lipid droplets, hemosiderin deposits, and extravasated bile. The only definitive treatment for xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis is cholecystectomy. Due to the inflammatory and invasive nature of xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis, complete resection of the xanthogranulomatous tissue adjacent to the gallbladder should be attempted, even if this includes resection into the hepatic bed. In most patients requiring surgery for xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis, open cholecystectomy is required due to dense fibrosis and extensive local inflammation. Laparoscopic cholecystectomy may be attempted, but conversion to open surgery is often required. When the hepatocystic triangle has been obscured by the inflammatory process, subtotal cholecystectomy is an option to avoid major complications, as long as gallbladder cancer has been excluded by intraoperative frozen section.